Glory to Jesus, hallelujah. And here we are doing the Peters and Chronicles, Angel Wars and Lucifer and Rebellion, show number 60. Praise God. And according to my calculations, let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Well, we got a whole bunch more shows to go. So uh, so we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, uh, pushing Brother Peterson to speak faster. Uh, everything will be fine. I'm sure uh, we will get at least another, I don't know, a few more uh, of these uh, uh, shows out. And uh, praise God. Uh, we got, well, and here's the thing. You know, there's no way that we can be sure. And there's probably only a handful of people in the world that have taken a metaphorical analo- uh, analogous punch in the mouth as many times as I've had. Praise Jesus. E- eating gummy crows until I gain like so much weight I got like diabetes and stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Praise God. But, um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, you know, uh, as me, you know, I, I uh, spent so many years uh, going back to, goodness gracious, probably t- 2010 and, and onward, especially starting about round about April of 2014, um, doing what I, I would call, well, what a lot of uh, people are doing today. Praise Jesus. I don't blame them a bit. I was there, been there, done that. Uh, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, not being a date setter, but a date resetter. And, and and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Praise Jesus. I think we should be excited as we can possibly be about getting off this alien demon infested rock. Glory to God. All right, that that's what we're commanded to do. When you look at the scripture, you know, um, look at what it says in, in, in the book of James. It says, he who is at, uh, it, who, who is in love with the earth is at enmity with God. You know, uh, uh, then you've got um, uh, Colossians 3.3 3, where it says, uh, keep your mind stayed on things above and not upon this earth. You know, we, we are commanded. It is our instruction to be, you know, ultimately obsessed with the Father. It's the number one commandment to love the Lord our God with all our heart, our mind, our soul. Most of us have no idea what that actually means. Uh, that is, in my personal opinion, absolute obsession. Praise Jesus. And um, you will become obsessed when you really get your arms around how big this is, when you learn to fear God, when you when that holy fear of the Lord takes you to a new place in your walk and your sanctification. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, I... I don't think any of us ever completely get there. I think metaphorically or analogously, we're probably all holding on to the bumper of the bus. The bus has left the the terminal. Praise God! Uh, but you know, we're 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 practicing righteousness. We're doing the very best we can to get all of our willful and habitual sin out of our lives. We still make mistakes. We still hit ourselves on the thumb with the hammer. We still cry and get upset and depressed sometimes. You know, occasionally we probably uh, get frustrated with the Father. You know, I know I do sometimes, and then I'm repenting for it. I'm like, sorry, Father. I'm sorry, Father. Please, in the name of Jesus, give me the patience of Job. Uh, you know, get, pull me through this. You know, help me get out of this gigantic molasses bathtub that I feel like I'm running through, waiting for things to happen and unfold, you know, listening hungrily to your servants, the prophets. But I used to be, praise Jesus, just like so many people out there, resetting the date, resetting the date. Oh, okay, well, it didn't happen on uh, the Feast of uh, Trumpet, so, uh, oh, w- well, what's the next Feast of the Lord? Well, maybe it'll happen on Passover, or maybe it'll happen on this day, or maybe it'll happen on Feast of Tabernacles, or whatever, you know, but always looking for the next big date, you know, uh, wearing my rapture jammies, getting excited, and it was driving me crazy. It was driving me absolutely, I, I came, we passed by so many dates in 2011. Oh, and folks, oh, folks, the same people that are out there, God bless Bless their sweethearts, but there are there are a lot of the same people that uh, were out there just ringing the bell in a humongous way, putting out YouTube video after YouTube video after YouTube video, um, uh, uh, just telling people, uh, look at this date, look at this date, uh, holy mackerel, you know, uh, showing you know uh, uh, snippets of movies and how uh, there's just way too many coincidences and the dates that show up on the sides of the, you know, like a train will go by and it'll show September of 2015 or something and they'll be like, that's, you know, and they'll paint out this fabulous story, which they're very good at, praise God, and I used to get so excited uh, you know, about how well this all just lines up. It has to be, the rapture has to be, uh, you know, this particular date. And um, and this has been going on, folks, for years and years. I mean, my goodness gracious, years and years and years from some people who really deeply, deeply, deeply love the Lord. And I used to ride uh, that that wave. I used to have myself, uh, you know, my little, uh, you know, uh, 
boogie board. It was all polished up. Uh, you know, I, I call it my Jesus, uh, uh, you know, uh, rapture date resetting boogie board. And I used to polish that bad boy up just waiting for the next person to come out with a video uh, and show a whole bunch of scriptures that they dug up in Haggai or wherever and going, oh, look, you know, it, it, everything indicates, you know, in the mathematics and the supernatural numbers and the occult this and the occult that. And, you know, and I got so pumped up. And then after about two years, you know, 2011, it was just absolutely jam packed with that stuff. I mean, it was every two or three months, it was another date. And it wasn't me. I wasn't by myself. It was like I was inventing it. It was like there was a whole bunch of people that are just love Jesus out there just doing it. And, and all their data seemed to be, you know, correlating and stuff. The one thing, though, that was consistent 2011, 2013, 2012, 2011, 2012, and 2013. It started to die off in 2013 a little bit. A lot, actually. But 2011 and 2012 were absolutely gushing with these types of videos, just like we're having right now. Uh, you know, I pet goat. You know, all that stuff. Um, you know, again, I, I want to avoid naming any names because I know these people love Jesus, and I don't I don't believe that it's – I know it's absolutely an abomination before the Lord to, uh, you know, cast dispersion and cause, uh, you know, uh, uh, frustrations and separation between the brethren. You know, we're not supposed to uh, cause dissensions. It's a sin. Um, but But it's out there. And many of us are very privy to it. Praise God. Um, and it's powerful. The message that comes from these these videos, like I Pet Goat, uh, these a lot of these videos that have come out pointing to different dates, like the 2012. I remember the 2012 Olympics uh, in the United Kingdom and how they had this gigantic. Uh, it was stupendous. It was one of the most unbelievably, incredibly awesome uh, uh, displays of this gigantic golden phoenix bird over the top of the globe. And anybody who understands the, this, and, and, oh, and there was a, uh, I believe that same year in 2012, there was a baseball game that had uh, uh, where the fight, something happened, and I hope I remember this right, but it's kind of vague to me at, the, at this moment. I'm not, but basically what happened, as I recall, was there was some kind of a baseball game, and while they were playing the national anthem, uh, I don't know if it was a light bulb or something burst and caught the flag on fire. So here they were like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and the flag catches on fire and burns. And so, of course, you know, people are taking that as a sign that the United States Babylon the Great is going to burn, you know. And then when you connect all this stuff together in these videos, you know, the Phoenix bird and the, and the 2012, and then there was this other incredible series of, uh, you know, occult, we'll call them coincidences, whereby the street names uh, in the actual um, uh, Olympic uh, village that they made in the United Kingdom were so telling. It might, I mean, it really looked like what was on the Illuminati playing cards with Big Ben being destroyed, and there were people predicting that there was going to be a huge bomb that would go off at the 2012 Olympics along with the Phoenix bird, and everybody was glued. All of us wacky conspiracy theorists waiting for Jesus to come. Because the thing is, um, you know, there's this true understanding associated with Revelation 12 to those of uh, us who have the discernment to see it, uh, whereby uh, ultimately the devil, I, I'm totally simplifying this, but it needs to be simplified for the sake of time, uh, but, uh, you know, ultimately, and this is true, ultimately the devil is cast down to earth, him and his fallen angels are cast down to earth once and for all, um, uh, uh, at, at about the same time that the bride is taken up to heaven, where, she, where you know, she, the woman, uh, on two wings of great eagle is taken to a, a, a place where she is nourished at the wedding supper of the Lamb for times, times, half a time away from the presence of the serpent. And I know there are theologians who do not think that that's the bride, but you know what? There's about 500 times more theologians that don't even see the rapture at all in the Bible, which blows my mind uh, because I had to be humbled and uh, you know, kind of get smacked around a little bit by the Lord before I got humbled enough to say, wow, I don't know anything. And it wasn't until I let go of all these occult videos and just started crying and just getting frustrated. I mean, I was frustrated. I, I, I no longer am I indignant. I'm not like stomping my feet like a three-year-old that wants a toy and my mom won't give it to me. I've gotten past that, but I haven't gotten past the depression, the sadness, the fatigue, being worn out 
when is this going to end? You know that metaphor that Paul used where he talks about excuse me, where he talks about us running a race. You know, there's a point where you get pretty tired, you know, running that race. That's a great metaphor, by the way. And, um, you know, and there's all kinds of scripture. You know, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk. But the key word there is renew, if you really want to get what that means. Renew. So you're going to get tired. You're going to need to renew that strength, right? And hopefully the Lord will help you renew that strength. How will we, how will we do that? Well, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can tell you that I'm renewed right now, and that's saying a lot because um, uh, uh, I should be laying on the ground crying like a baby. I should be absolutely unable to speak. I'm so – last week was one of the hardest weeks I've had in 18 years of consulting. I'm not kidding. We were working eight, nine, ten hours straight, no, no breaks over lunch. And it was one of the most high-energy groups of people I've ever worked with in my life. And they pushed hard. And if I didn't say no, they would have had me working 8, 9, 10 o'clock at night, 12 hours, 13 hours straight through. But I, had to, I told them I have to go. Um, uh, but it was very hard. And um, running through airports, you know, traveling on Saturday, juggling radio shows, all that kind of stuff. And I get tired, you know, I get real, real, real super tired. And then, you know, of course, when I get back, I'm behind a schedule, so I got to schedule the next trip out to Phoenix, which is next week, and I got to meet the deadlines for this client that I met last week. But oh, by the way, the client two weeks before wants to have an update to their documentation, so I got to do three different client stuff at the same time. And they're calling me on the phone and da da da. I'm like, you know, are you kidding me? Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm trying to hold it together. And in the midst of that, well, anyway, so the Lord, so how does the Lord renew? Well, the Lord renews each of our strength differently because we don't all, you know, feed off the same stuff. You know, we, we don't all dance to the same drummer. You know, some of us need to see this kind of information. Some of us need to see that kind of stimulus. Some of us, you know, we all are made up of a different series of compositions that make up who we are. And I understand when I was reading the book uh, by Sarah Manette, There Is No Death, which is absolutely f fabulous, uh, when she was uh, in this holding pattern in heaven, uh, she uh, was explaining that our personality characteristics, our attributes – don't go away when we go to heaven. That they are that, that that was the attributes that we were created with, which was something that we could have hypothesized. We could have postulated that. That would be something that would make sense, especially if you understand the angel wars and you understand the whole thing about there is no death, right? Because we were here like for zillions of years and all that, and then we're gonna either go to heaven or hell. You don't die. Well, when you but the idea of carrying your attributes, that which makes up your composition, you know, your personality and such like that, carrying them on to heaven. Now, of course, we, we grow. We become more holy, more sanctified. We get, go into a glorified body. I'm sure that there's a tremendous amount of change that happens when we get to heaven over time. But she had pointed out, she would confirmed what other people had said in their testimonies of going to heaven. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. The reason I'm bringing that forward is that we don't all dance to the same drummer. We don't. We all have different triggers. Well, anyway, I'm going to try to make this, this – this is this. I hope I do a good job. I hope that I, I, I am saying a meaningful thing to those who are listening to the radio show. But I had a series of coincidences that happened to me that confirmed for me in my heart that the Lord was speaking to me. Now, it's not going to confirm to you in your heart. It's not going to confirm to Kenneth in his heart. It's not going to confirm to anybody else in their heart. There might be some people out there who think like I do or respond to stimulus – the same way that I do, and it will probably ring true in your spirit better than it would ring true in maybe somebody else's. I don't know. I would submit there would have to be some sort of a matching series of attributes associating with our, our like personalities in order for this to ring true with you. I don't know, but I will share this with you. I do not – I cannot confirm the dates. I can. All I can tell you is – Quite some time ago, we scheduled a man by the name of David Doetry. In 1996, we scheduled him for the main radio shows, the Wednesdays and Sunday night radio shows. Dave Doetry um, uh, lives right down the road from me in what's called Arcadia, Florida. He's on a old farm. He's got roosters and chickens and all that kind of stuff, kind of like Kenneth. And um, uh, 
in 96, he was shown a vision of a big Death Star, a round alien spacecraft in the sky. And supposedly it showed up, to the best of his recollection in the vision, approximately three weeks prior to the rapture occurring. And David Dotry admitted that a lot of people showed him in the Bible that there was no such thing as a rapture. And David Dotry said, well, look, I'm not going to argue with you about what you see in the Bible. All I can tell you is that the Lord showed me that there is a rapture. So he stood his ground because he knew that the vision was from the Lord. It was a powerful, mighty vision. Praise God. Well, anyway, this is the thing that's amazing about it. And I'm going to try to stay on point because it's there's so many little details that are so powerfully anointed and supernatural that it I could get caught in a rabbit hole trying to tell the story. But I want to try to highlight the major points. So we tried to schedule Dave Doetry a while back. Well, we did. He confirmed. I sent out the email notifications to everybody. And we were going to bring him on the show to talk about the big alien spacecraft that looked like a copper ball from 1996. I was in Toronto at the time. Make a note of that, by the way. I was in Toronto at the time, and Dave Doetry contacted me and had to cancel the show. Dave Dotry came back on the radio show just last night, praise Jesus, which were a week delayed on these broadcasts. It was the 12th. And I confirmed, I called him on the phone to confirm that he was going to be showing up for the radio show just to make sure that everything was okay. And guess where I was? I was in Toronto. Make a note of that. Both times I talked to Dave Dotry, I was in Toronto. I've been consulting for 18 years and I've only been in Toronto two times and both times I talked to Dave Dotry. Are you connecting the dots here? Is there a little bell ringing? Are the arms, are the hairs on your arms standing straight up? Well, wait until you hear the rest. Now, Dave Drotry canceled because he had family problems, but it's more significant than that to me. Why? Well, because between the two shows, the one that Dave Dotry originally canceled and him actually showing up on the air, two events happened to me, me down. They kicked me to the ground. You have to understand that my, well, my last name is Sightsinger. That name means the caller of time. In Germany, it's Sights, S-E-I-T-Z, which means time, and Singer, Z-I-N-G-E-R, which means singer. My first name is John, means Yahweh has given. Yahweh has given a caller of the time. That's significant. To me, anyway. Maybe not to you, but to me. And the very fact that I do these radio shows, nine hours of them a day, over 530 radio shows, over 420 articles written uh, and published since 2009. I don't even know how many radio shows I've appeared on other radio shows. I just got another one scheduled for the midweek of August. Praise Jesus. The point being that I take this work very seriously, and I fear God. And for me to get punched in the mouth by the devil too many times, it makes me wonder what is going on here. Because I'm either A, getting tested by God, Lord God tests the righteous, or or the devil's breaking through my prayers because I'm praying for constant protection. I didn't know what was going on. All I knew is that here's what happened. Dave Dotry canceled, and I'm just going after the milestones, folks. I'm leaving out the de- the minutia in the middle, the soft and chewy inside. Let's just go for the, the big fig Newton. Doetry cancels. Then we got Patricia Green on the show. Remember, I'm going for a 2016-2017 timeline. That's what I wrote all my articles about. That's what I'm preaching to people. Of course I'm telling them we don't know for sure. 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 And we won't. Dotry cancels. Next, Patricia Green comes on. She, after so many other confirmations, she comes on the show and tells everybody that the Lord showed her in 2014 that the judgments that will that the Lord showed her in her vision with the tsunami and the destruction of the United States happens while Obama is in the office of the president. Just make a note of that. But she mentions another prophet by the name of Bennett. And how he has this notion that we're going to go into the 2020s, 2025, all that kind of stuff. And he, he's got this whole thing, this whole timeline that he's you know made up. And that's what he believes, and that's fine. Everybody's 
you know, got their own belief systems. That's fine. Praise God. But it didn't match. The Bennett stuff doesn't match the T.D. Hale stuff. It doesn't match all the other stuff that I've been collecting all of these years. And I'm, I'm distressed over this. But then Patricia Green mentions that she was told by the Lord that there are only five more Passovers to preach the gospel. Well, think about it. That was in 2014. Do the math. 2014, that would be 2015, 2016, 2017. 2018, 2019. That's five more Passovers from 2014. She mentioned the word Passover, by the way. Patricia Green. But she also mentioned Bennett, and she thought that maybe, you know, and, and, and I was like, okay. And I started having a little bit of doubts because the Bennett thing cu- keeps popping up. Then the next thing happens. Remember, Dotri canceled. Patricia Green comes on, casts a little bit of doubt. But nevertheless, the numbers are still adding up to the 2016, 2017 timeline. Just fine. But a little bit of doubt entered. Then I get in contact with, uh, you know, somebody else um, that, uh, uh, well, Brother Stan Johnson. Stan Johnson doesn't believe in the rapture, which is fine. But he comes out and he tells me, we're talking on the phone, and he tells me that he believes we're going into, and this is no secret, folks. I mean, just go to the Prophecy Club. It's right there on the front page of his website. He put together a DVD, and he's telling everybody that we're going into the 2020s. We're going to go up to 2022, 2023, and he bases a lot, uh, largely upon this Bennett guy again. Which is fine. Like I said, every, we're all entitled to put together our timelines. Praise Jesus. But he, but Johnson writes me an email, and he says, we're having a conversation back and forth. We're sharing notes. And he tells me, oh, no, 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 no. All your hypotheses are wrong because Obama will stay in the office of the president for another five years. Now I'm really bothered. I'm, I'm down. I'm kicked to the ground. I am distressed because now the doubts of the devil have been thrown into my heart, and I'm going, okay, maybe we're not going to be here. Maybe we're going to go into the 2020s. Maybe we're going to go to 2025. Maybe we're going to be here so so long that I'll be so old, all I do is sit in a corner, drool, and look, and eat, eat green pea soup, which is whatever. Praise Jesus. All right, now, who knows? I'm trying to stay humble. I'm trying to stay motivated, and I want the Lord to renew my strength, but I don't know. But I'm depressed. I'm bummed because I'm thinking to myself, what if I'm wrong? What if we're here to 2023? What if we're here to 2025? Am I getting people all psyched up and motivated about the things that T.D. Hale said he saw when Obama was in the office of the president? Patricia Green said she saw when she was in a, that Glenda Jackson said is going to happen, that's going to cause Obama to usurp the presidency and cancel the 26th of the land? Are all these things, is the Sarah Manette vision one big upside down, uh, miscontorted uh, uh, timeline? It's, uh, you know, uh, is everything completely misunderstood? Is my obsession with the timeline, Yahweh has given a caller of the time. Yahweh has given a caller of the time. Is my obsession with the timeline incorrect? Well, I care. So I'm seeking the Lord and I'm in tears. And guess what? Dave Dotry comes back on the radio show. He didn't. We didn't call him. He called us. He scheduled pretty much the date. I mean, it was kind of random. It was like the next available date. And he said, yep, I'll do it. When I confirmed the date, I was in Toronto a second time. The odds of that are like one in a hundred quadrillion. And then, on the radio show, he explains... Now, I wrote one of the most popular articles out of the 420-plus articles that are on tribulation-now.org. I wrote one of those. It was one of the most popular ones, and it was entitled Blue 21. Brother Dotry explains that I didn't know any of this stuff. None of this stuff was in the original vision. Some of it was, but little bits and pieces, but not the whole story. Last night, he told the whole story. What he told everybody was that when he started to pray... The reason why he started seeking the Lord was because he wanted to know one thing. Just one. All he wanted to know was, am I going to be alive during the rapture? That's it. He didn't want to know nothing about any alien spaceship. All he wanted to know was, am I going to be alive during the rapture? Understand why the Lord kept showing him the number 21 in the vision. 
He talked to lots of people. He couldn't understand it. And he explained on the radio show last night, The re- he said the only thing he could figure was that maybe it meant 21 years from now. 21 years from 1996 would indicate that the rapture occurs in April or spring slash summer of 2017. I have had published on tribulation-now.org the third secret of Fatima, which the centennial date thereof was uh, prophesied to indicate a pole shift. Revelation 6, verse 14, every island and mountain is moved out of place, 14b, the second half. I've had that up on on Tribulation Now as my argument for this whole thing to be over uh, by the spring-slash-summer of 2017. David Dotry last night, who, by the way, canceled the first show. You know, if David Dotry had showed up on the first program, none of this would matter. I wouldn't be talking about it right now. Just been another radio show with another prediction. The reason why it's meaningful is because I got my butt kicked by two other people, in essence, you know, metaphorically speaking, uh, telling me that they thought we might go into the 2020. So I was upset about it. And if and if I hadn't have been upset about what these other people were telling me their hypotheses were. Don't you see? And then Toronto, second time, Dave Dotry, the timing is all impossible. He shows up just when I need to have my strength renewed. Those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And what does he say? His exact words were 21 plus 1996 takes us to, to, and then he was shown in his vision that the rapture occurs in the late spring, early summer. Well, isn't it just fascinating as can be that Matthew 24, 32, at the end of the Olivet Discourse, when Jesus is talking about uh, uh, all the bad stuff happening uh, and, and, and him coming, you know, it says, uh, you know, right a couple of verses before verse 32, it says, immediately after the, the difficult times of those days, it uses the word tribulation. Note that it does not say great tribulation. It just says uh, tribulation, difficult, you could say difficult times, hard times, pressing times, difficult, you know, it, it means troubled, troubled times of those days. The sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the heaven, and the powers of the heaven will be shaken. Those are the same exact words in Revelation 6, verse 12 and 13, ultimately, give or take. But it, it matches perfectly. All right, And then right after he says that, verse 32, he says, he pauses, I assume, and he says, now, learn this parable from the fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and put forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it, e.g. my coming, is near at the doors, exclamation point. And then he goes and says, know that this generation will by no means come to pass, heaven and earth, you know, blah, blah. Okay, praise Jesus. Did you get that? Know that summer is near. In the actual vision published by Dave Dotry in 1996, he said that he could tell in the vision that the rapture occurred, that summer was near, but it had nothing to do with the verse at all. I noticed that. The Lord witnessed that to me last night on the radio show. It was called to me supernaturally. I was like... Pa-pow! And my arms were on fire. I mean, not on fire burning, but I mean, it was like that whole Holy Spirit thing came over me. I was like, that's it! The parable! And then guess what? When's, the, when's Passover? Passover is April 12th, or April 10th through April 18th of 2017. Exodus, I think it's chapter 3, verse 14, talks about what? No, 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 no. I'll go ahead and give you the exact verse. You know why? Because i got to memorize it. Praise Jesus. All right, Exodus 10. Exodus 10, verse 21. Then the Lord said said to Moses, stretch out your hands toward the heaven, and then there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, darkness that can be felt. So Moses stretched out his hands toward the heaven, and there was a thick darkness in the land of Egypt for three days. What happened during that darkness? The death angel came down. It was a Passover. 
The evil angels came down and killed the firstborn of Egypt. It's a shadow. Patricia Green said the gospel will be preached for what? Five more Passovers. Why do you think the Lord chose that word? What's that have to do with anything? The price of cantaloupes in India. Hmm, I don't know. Anyway, we'll see. Watch and pray. Don't know. Praise God. But to me, the Lord has renewed my strength. Because you know what? You have to experience it yourself. You have to be there, done that. It's got to ring true with your DNA. And when it does ring true, that cookie's already in your mouth and you're chewing it and saying, yummy, yum, yum, and nobody can take that cookie out of your mouth. Praise God. And on that note, i got to get back to the Peterson Chronicles. I just had to share. <laughs> Listen to this. This is a, a great segue into the Peterson Chronicles. This is an old Chicago song from back on Chicago 3, except it's not. It's like kind of like a song, but not really. It's kind of like, you know, it was like a jazz band thing. But it's so, I don't know, Peterson Chronicle-esque. Chicago 3, believe it or not. Listen to this. It's called... When all the laughter dies in sorrow. Check this out. When all the laughter dies in sorrow, and the tears have risen to a flood, when all the wars have found a cause in human wisdom and in blood, do you think they'll cry in sadness? Do you think the eye will blink? Do you think they'll curse the madness? Do you even think they'll think? When all the great galactic systems sigh to a frozen halt in space, do you think there will be some remnant of beauty of the human race? Do you think there will be a vestige or a sniffle or a cosmic tear do you think a greater thinking thing will give a damn that man was here? Johnny, that was so deep. It's got me jonesing for 25 for 6 to 4, brother. <laughs> oh, man, that Chicago 3 album in my, you know, I'm an old jazz kind of guy, so that Chicago 3 album is like my all-time, all-time favorite ever done. I love that stuff. I play my trombone to it. I was playing my trombone. Problem is, I'm so, my whole embouchure is so dorked up right now from not playing, I can only play for about maybe five minutes before my lips get all puffed up and I can't I walk around with big fat lips for a while you know yeah. I play my trombone sometimes and the dogs join and they start howling do they uh, uh, yeah folks we both played the trombone yep <laughs> oh, oh, oh hey, you know, let's do let, let's do the Charles Haller disclaimer real quick haven't done that for a while Opinions of our guests are not necessarily those of Tribulation Now. TribulationNow.org, TribulationNow.net, TribulationNow.com, Facebook.com, forward slash Tribulation Now. Or for that matter, ah, heck, they may not be anyone else's opinions. 
So be a good Berean, Acts 1711, and search the scriptures daily to see if it is so. May God bless you. I'm sorry, what were you saying, Kenneth? Oh, and by the way, I turned your mic on there, Lauren, so you know you don't want to be like eating bananas and making like Coca-Cola sounds. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth, <laughs> Kenneth, Kenneth, you were no, saying something? No fighting over the cat food, Lauren. No fighting over the cat food. <laughs> Just let those aliens eat it. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. District 9, man, that cat food was like, it was like money for them, boy. Let me tell you what. <laughs> yeah. Jane, I love that movie. But I just wanted to say that teaching uh, you just mentioned on the um, waiting upon the Lord and, you know, soaring like an eagle, running and not growing weary and walking and not growing faint. Yeah, that applies to all aspects of our life. You know, we're to rise above all the challenges in life. The, when, the, when the adversities come and the troubles hit us, soar like an eagle, eagle above the storms, you know. And when the opportunities present themselves, you know, we have to run here and run there like you were doing, going to Toronto and traveling. And I'm dealing with new customers. And Brother Lauren is, you know, coming up with a new poker strategy or a pinochle strategy <laughs> with the aliens. No, he was out there. He was out there. He was out there messing with all the construction workers. They're running a new, uh, uh, doing a bunch of public works prog- pr- process stuff out in the front of his house. And he's like going out there with a big thing of iced tea and some sandwiches, going, "Hey, you guys want a drink? Want a sandwich?" And they're like, "Oh yeah, man." He's like, "Only kidding." And then he runs away. <laughs> you know, but that's Lauren. You know how he is. <laughs> but, you know, we all have the opportunities in life, so we have to run, run to, and you, you, you get, you get weary running. You know. And then also the day-to-day tasks, you know, like Groundhog Day moments like you and I talk about. You know, those, those are the things we walk to. And, and, and you know, we don't, we don't want to grow, grow faint on, on that type of thing. It's just those are the day-to-day tasks, you know, taking out the garbage, taking a shower, making your bed, cleaning the house, going to work. It's Groundhog Day. But in all those instances, the troubles of life, we soar like an eagle. The opportunities we run and don't grow weary and, and you know they, they just the day-to-day things we walk and don't faint you know it's just it's all by waiting upon the lord we've got to look for him we've got to listen for him we've got to long for him and that's what it means to wait say amen brother and that strength comes through his grace that's sufficient in our weakness and it's incredible when, when you finally get this folks and you realize that it's all about jesus and he provides you what you need it's exciting it's exciting he's there in all aspects of our life you know, and it's it's true, but you know, and 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 I I couldn't agree more. And it's very, you know, when we're up, when when one when one of the members of the body of Jesus Christ is up and happy, we I believe have a scriptural obligation to pull up the other ones that are sad, like it says in First Corinthians twelve verse twenty six. And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. The point being that, uh, you know. We suffer, you know. We, we have our ups, we have our downs. You know, we're, we got to pull each other up. We, we're all running the race together. We're all in this together. You know, when 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 uh, and it's hard. You know, it's hard. You're right, Kenneth. I mean, you know, you got to keep on. I don't know when you're when you're not going into a, tri- a tr- traditional brick and mortars church where you got a bunch of people hanging around you and saying, "Oh, it's going to be all right," and encouraging you and all that. When you know, like like many of us are. Uh, why, um, you know, uh, 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 what, what the heck is that sound? Kenneth, what are you doing? Are you fighting it out with those crazy, wacky chickens or what? What's going on over there? Yeah. I'm reclining my chimney. Sorry. Oh, I, I was wondering I was wondering what that was. I thought maybe you were in there cleaning chicken, you know, dookie off the side of the... Hey, hey, get them things out of here. They're ferocious. They're always trying to... Ow, ow. Those things are... They were, they're dangerous, Kenneth. <laughs> Ow, one of them's going through my leg. Ow. Ow. Oh, get that thing out of here. <laughs> yes, folks. Uh, Brother Kenneth is repointing his chimney as he speaks. Praise the Lord. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I only got 26 more feet to go to the top, brother. <laughs> oh, no. Wow. Praise God. That's amazing. Kenneth, by the way, is like the world's greatest multitasker. It is absolutely amazing. As a matter of fact, I've done many, uh, many, many, many um, Kenneth, uh, 
you know, radio show bits, you know, sound bite bits uh with Kenneth um you know, like like here's one. Here here here's one. Kenneth K- Kenneth and his uh super duper uh high speed um <laughs> multitasking life. You can like slice and dice and fix your house and fix showers and what it sounds like you have like a spackling thing in your hand like a like a what do they call that thing the trowel like a trowel sound. Yes, I have a trowel in my hand and I'm using a uh, a pointing a pointing mortar and I'm repointing my chimney and it started to rain right when you played that so I'm standing on oh, the no. porch now watching the rain so I'm praying, and it's sunny out. And it's sunny out, John, and it's raining. <laughs> oh, great. Oh, it's not normal. It's not normal. We've had now rain you, every day. Look, oh, now all you need is a gay pride per, gay pride parade to come marching up your your uh, your uh, uh, driveway and a triple rainbow and a lightning bolt going down the center. <laughs> yeah, yeah, with those six-color rainbows, not the seven-color rainbow oh, yeah. that God created. They forgot indigo. Yep. They skipped exactly. indigo. Yep. Can't have indigo. Can't have indigo. Hey, uh, I just wanted to um, say something about multitask. Not all it's cut out to be, folks. Oh, I don't know how you do it. I I don't know how you do it, bro. Uh, There's no – I mean, I I deal with my own insane stuff, but, you know, my my yard work is 120th, 120th. Fiftieth of what yours is. You, I mean, you. My gosh, I don't know how in the world you need to go. You need to get Lauren to go get some of those uh, public works guys to come out to your house and give you a hand. <laughs> I, 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 uh, I just have to keep going. I mean, we've had this conversation before. Penn's Wood, Pennsylvania. If you don't keep up with the fields and the uh, the pastures around the property, uh, the forest encroaches, and then the critters jump onto your roof and they find a way in, like the squirrels and the and the chipmunks, and before you know it, they're living in your attic and chewing on your wires. And so it's <laughs> yeah. a constant battle to keep the forest back. You have to keep a perim- perimeter around the property. You know? Absolutely. <laughs> Here's your theme song, man. <laughs> right on. Right on. You're not gonna, we're not going to believe this. I am standing here in this rainstorm with this cloud over my house. There's a rainbow. Everywhere you look, and it's got seven colors in it, folks. Everywhere okay. you look, it's sunny, except right over my house. Okay. <laughs> All right. I, you know what? This is like the most appropriate time ever to play that song. Um, what is that song with the dancing um, <laughs> policemen and firemen? <laughs> uh, oh, never mind. Well, I am yeah, Y M C A, and there's Kenneth. Kenneth's up on a ladder with a Bluetooth doing a radio show. Y M C A. There's a giant oh, rainbow and a lightning bolt coming down. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! You know it's the apocalypse now. If they found it all the way up to your house, wait a minute. It's not Y M C A playing. What is that song? Oh no! Right on. <laughs> 
<laughs> Never mind. Oh my gosh. Whew. Village people. Hey, Jesus. Remember village people. The village. Yeah, people. the village people. I guess they're talking about Greenwich, Greenwich Village, New York. <laughs> I'm guessing. What do I know? Ah, <sighs> anyway. Lauren, well, I'm what's so going on? I'm excited to hear about some more of this freaky deaky stuff from Brother Lauren. <laughs> freaky deaky <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, we need absolutely. We need to be fair. Come on, we're bringing on Lauren now. Let's set the pace here. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> oh, he caught me in a yawn. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> hey, hey, Kent needs some help up there on that ladder. <laughs> I just had to bring everything in, folks. It's raining. Oh, oh no! Yeah. What is wow. what 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 does that do to your concrete slash spackle stuff that you're putting up? Does the water I affect it or no? It's a pretty steady downward rain. The chimney's staying dry, and this stuff is uh, a fairly fast set. So. It looks okay, folks. I think we're going to be all right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. We got caught a break. We got a break. <laughs> well, so take it it's, uh, Lord. it's admirable, uh, Kenneth, that you're doing that now rather than waiting till November when the big blizzard hits, right? <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah. I have to stay up on this stuff. If I don't stay up on it, then I am out there doing crazy stuff when you shouldn't be. That's right. Yeah. 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 Uh, on the ba- meanwhile, back on the farm, <laughs> they they would say you make hay when the sun shines. So you don't wait till it's pouring rain and then go out and make hay. You make hay when the sun is shining. Um, this one time I was uh, helping uh, helping somebody bale hay, and uh, the hay was wet because it had rained like the night before. And turn those um, formerly light bales into 100 pounders. <laughs> so you're lifting up and tossing those 100 pounders constantly all day long because they're wet. So you, you, ideally, you want those hay bales to be light to make it much easier. Um, <clears throat> so. Uh, what do you guys want to know? I want to know. Here's what I want to know: the meaning <laughs> of life. The meaning if you of can life. summarize that, if you can summarize the meaning of life <laughs> in three sentences or less, you win. <laughs> but no, I just, I think what you're talking about is extremely fascinating, and there's like like John said, different things. Um, Intrigue us. We're all wired differently, and and you and I and Johnny and a lot of the listeners are really fascinated by this stuff. It's the uh, it's the things that are unsaid in the church, perhaps out of ignorance, perhaps out of uh, just you know disinterest. You know, you go out in the street and you ask uh, people if they understand what's wrong with this world or what's going wrong with this world. Most people say, "I don't know," and "I don't care." And those are the two biggest problems in this world, ignorance and indifference. And the group of people that we fellowship with here, they're not ignorant and they're not indifferent. So the stuff you talk about is fascinating. I just love it. I just listen while I mount my chimney. (laughs) (laughs) Working on a mower, I just listen along and jump in when I have something relevant. So take it away. I forget where we're at. We're on day, what day are we on, brother? Um, Four, day four. Fourth day. Fourth day, four, folks. Yeah, the fourth day of the in the creation story is uh, quite a large canvas to paint because there's it it involves uh, beings out there, dimensions and star systems and uh, life forms out there, as well as the interaction here. So it's a huge canvas and involves pre pre human history and then during. Uh, human or mankind history and right up to the through the book of revelation so it's all very relevant but <clears throat> um yeah it's, it's it's difficult sometimes for people that are plugged into the matrix you know they're just trying to get through another day at work 
a job they hate, boss they hate, colleagues they hate, you know, going back to a, after work to a, to a house to, with to a spouse or somebody that they hate, you know, it's just life uh, just couldn't get any worse and then try to be worried about aliens, you know, <clears throat> things that when we talk about in the show, it just doesn't connect with them because, um, or if, or if they, somebody's genuinely been through, uh, uh, like the ringer, a really bad situation, and they're just horribly beat up and torqued inside. Uh, they're just turned to mush, their mo- emotions. And so worrying about aliens is the last thing they want to worry about. They just want to go somewhere to be left alone and leave me alone, get out of my face, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So that they're emotionally distraught. So until they receive healing and they can get back on their, their feet, back on their feet emotionally, it, it's still, even then, it still might be some time later on that they can then acquire an interest in these advanced topics. So so we can understand that not everybody's going to be on board this stuff right away. It's not that they forever might not be, but they may not be at this point due to certain circumstances in their life. And <clears throat> Pastors are getting hammered by every direction, and they they have to be like a jack of all trades with with a, the one hundred percent correct answers across the board on everything biblical, you know. And it's it's probably just not humanly possible to do that. And so they have enough on their plate to deal with, let alone worrying about aliens or Pleiadians or Syrians, you know, <laughs> that kind of thing. So, on the one hand, it's understandable why everybody is not on board this stuff, but for those of us who take an interest in this. I think the the Lord is going to use us mightily when the time comes to to bring this wisdom and <clears throat> learning to the table because this kind of stuff is going to come in full force at some point in the future, full force, and it's going to lead many to uh, many astray. But for those of us who know, we can then uh, intercede directly and through prayer and directly in conversation and stuff to steer many away from the deceptions that are in the Syrians and Pleiadians and Arcturians and stuff. Okay, So <clears throat> that's that's the purpose um, of reading through this site, of analyzing what the Syrians are, are uh, channeling through this Patricia Corey, wh- what their message is and how you know, on the surface, it sounds all glowing and harmonious and loving and full of light and love and a, a future and a destiny, but what's the deception? So that's what we're trying to uncover here. <clears throat> and some of this deception is right in the very words they choose to use. Okay, so we'll get in that. So the last three uh, chronicles, I've been uh, going into a lot of detail on mankind's original Adam and Eve original DNA, you know, 12 strands, fully active, fully active, activated DNA before their fall, before their sin. And then we get down to today, and down, we're down now, mankind stripped down to two strands of DNA at 8% activation. So does that sound like mankind has evolved? <laughs> it sounds to me like we've almost fallen flat on our face. So when Jesus said, and unless those days be cut short, no flesh would be saved, that, again, a lot of things that Jesus said and, and a lot of things throughout the Bible can be, there's multiple layers of meaning, okay, and multiple tie-ins of one scripture to another scripture to another scripture. Okay, so one application of what Jesus said there is it should be logic 101. If you can come to understand that Adam and Eve started at the top and look at where we are now. Do you think mankind, in ex- going through this World War III and then going through an Armageddon situation later on, and Planet X and all the Earth upheavals and volcanoes and earthquakes and meteor showers and nuclear bombs going off and biochemical agents all over the place, you know, and no food to eat, no water to drink? Do you th- how long do you think mankind can survive being further stripped? down to one strand DNA at 4%, 2% activation. Do you think mankind would have any chance of surviving through all that? 
I think what Jesus said was very pointed to the point that mankind cannot survive another worldwide cataclysm. Now, to, in order to understand a worldwide cataclysm, you have to come to understand that the Noah's flood was a worldwide cataclysm. Then later on, the Tower of Babel was another worldwide cataclysm. Because in both cataclysms, you see a nearly plus or minus a 50% drop-off in mankind's age span, and that reflects to soul powers. Mind, will, emotions, okay, soul powers, the powers of soul, the soul realm, to where we are today. <clears throat> so at 8% activation, if somebody showed up on the scene at 16% activation and living twice as long to 160 years in full health and, and youthful vitality, we would think they were, must be gods, okay, um, but they wouldn't be. It's just that more of their DNA has been activated, both the, the DNA that relates to the flesh body as well as the DNA that relates to the powers of soul, okay? So let's, you know, if we go back in time, if we travel back in time from here and we go back to the Tower of Babel before the world collapsed, that civilization collapsed, okay? You know, what would it be like if mankind today had 50% activation and six strands of DNA? or, you know, four or whatever, you know. Again, if you were to bring the Tower of Babel people on the scene today, we would think they were really gods, okay, because look at their power, look at their stature, look at how long they live and free of disease, you know, that we suffer under and everything. We would think they're gods, all right? Well, picture the Syrians, picture the Pleiadians, the Arcturians, these Anunnaki's that are kind of, show up here you know they probably have long lives they're what supposedly 30 feet tall they have advanced technologies don't you think they're going to look like gods to us okay and this what do you think they looked like back in the days of sumerians when they showed up to, to the sumerians it definitely looked like gods to the sumerians all right but they're just a have more dna activated it doesn't mean they're gods it just means they have more dna activated and they're just as susceptible to sin as we are. Okay. So whoever, whatever group out there is trying to portray themselves to us as ascended masters or superior godlike beings, it still comes down to the sin issue. Is there sin in their lives? Are they uplifting Jesus Christ as the only, you know, only begotten Son of God, or are they demoting him to an ascended master? Okay. Okay, that's really how you detect these these groups. Okay. So I spent a lot of time on this DNA thing for a reason and that reason then also spills over into how our educational system teaches that we all, you know, mankind has evolved over the course of mankind, you know, from from Lucy over in Africa, you know, uh from the great apes and further on back down to pond scum. So <clears throat> um would you rather believe that your your uh, ancestors are pond scum, or would you rather believe that your that your origins come from our Heavenly Father? Okay, I know the answer for me. I, I I'll never admit to being descended from my great from you know great pond scum ancestors or the great apes. Okay, don't insult the pond scum. <laughs> don't insult the apes claiming to be descended from them okay they will deny it for me i came from my heavenly father above all right that's for me now this dna thing this evolution has infiltrated our schools and it's even infiltrated the churches so the churches have bought into the lie of evolution never understanding that the bible in its own plain black and white has told us otherwise that mankind, that Adam and Eve started at the top, and now we're almost right there on the bottom. And Jesus himself said, unless those days be cut short, no flesh should be saved. He knew where mankind was headed for unless he intervenes. But there wouldn't be a mankind anymore on the next global cataclysm. Okay, 
So <clears throat> evolution, folks, is not an upward process. It is a downward process, devolution. And you can change the O into I, and you got devolution, okay? Uh, it, to me, it's, it's simple 101 biblical logic. Mankind has gone downhill. And yet here's the Syrians trying to dangle that carrot in front of our faces that, hey, we have this chance here of evolving into a higher dimensional beings here. <clears throat> well, you might be able in your fallen state um, evolve into a higher dimensional being, but you'll never enter through the pearly gates. And you might think, well, that's fine, and Danny, who, who wants to enter through the pearly gates anyway if I can just ascend to a higher dimension? But what you're not being told is the truth here. The highest dimension you can acquire that you can ascend to within this scenario is the ninth dimension, which is the Luciferian dimension, when you become one with Lucifer. Would you rather become one with Lucifer or one with Jesus? The answer should be simple, but a lot of people out there are confused. They think that Lucifer is the angel of light. He's the god of light and love for all for mankind. And they think that the 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 god that we serve is the that one that over there that's called Satan that's always out to kick man when he's down and take him down and uh fool him and trick him and shortchange him and everything. So they got it all turned around. So the Bible, you know, says uh, you know, people that call Evil, good, and, and good, evil. Okay, they got it all upside down. So in our fallen state, it's really difficult to determine what's right side up and what's upside down when you don't even know what side is what side Okay, to begin with. And so it's easily to be misled. It's easily to mis be misled by these Syrians and these other groups. And then when, when you sit in school and they teach you evolution and then you go to the Bible study or church Sunday school and the, the church there is, is agreeing to evolution, you know, it's pretty hard to come up with, uh, you know, any kind of independent analysis unless you deviate, you go beyond what you're being taught there and reach out. Nowadays with the Internet, you can find um, the truth much more easily. But you can also find deception much more easily as well. So you still have to have your discernment ears, you know, plugged in, your discernment plugged in. And so this DNA business, that's why I spent so much time on it. It has infiltrated um, just about the whole world's understanding of things, and they've been hoodwinked into thinking that, that we're going upward when, in fact, we're going downward. And uh, it's just one big deception. So, okay, I'll continue. Um, I'll start out again with that first paragraph. Accelerating human awareness as we become more highly conscious guardians of planet Earth and prepare for ascension of our sun, our Earth, ourselves, light bearers from the ascended Syrian star, Satius, are committed to helping us achieve the awakening of our light bodies, activation of our dormant DNA strands, and an idea of what we can expect as we approach the ascension vortex of our passage into the higher dimensions. Well, that sounds really wonderful, higher dimensions. We want to go higher. <laughs> they provide the awakening with a greater understanding of the forces behind the global conspiracy to keep us from realizing our starseed legacy. Would you rather be a, have a starseed legacy or a godseed legacy? For me, I'd rather have a godseed legacy to assist in the rebirthing of planet Earth, to bring the light of truth to those who are still huddled in the darkness and assist those who intend to serve as healers and guides of the ascension during the great transformation of all life in our quadrant of the three-dimensional galaxy. So all throughout, you know, this Syrian channeled understanding of things is this idea of starseed legacy. You know, and that sounds really nice, it sounds noble, it sounds like a, a destiny to ascend to, but again, would you rather be a star seed legacy or would you rather be God seed legacy? For me, I'd rather be God seed legacy. <clears throat> okay, so right there, when the Syrians are using the, that phrase, star seed legacy, they are demoting mankind. They're dangling that carrot in front of you, but that carrot is a deception. They're trying to get you to settle 
to starseed legacy when you are really, in all truth, destined through Jesus Christ to be Godseed legacy. How high do you want to go? If you only get to starseed legacy, the, the highest you can go within that realm is the ninth dimension, the Luciferian dimension. Okay? If you want to go with Godseed legacy, you got all of God's heaven open, wide open to you. Okay? So I'd rather go that route than the starseed legacy route. Okay, so uh, the ascension vortex, okay? That sounds like a black hole to me. A vortex, the vortex of a black hole. So typically we think of a black hole kind of like a drain in a tub, you know, sucking down the water into the sewer, okay? So they use a different phrase here, ascension vortex going up, okay? So this ascension vortex, instead of dragging you down, uh, sucks you up into the higher dimensions. But again, as I said, the higher dimensions within this fallen reality, the highest dimension you can go is in the ninth, which is the being at one with Lucifer. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I'll I'll pass on that opportunity to ascend through this vortex to the ninth dimension. I'll pass on that because I've got higher dimensions that I will rise to through Jesus Christ. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> And the Syrian star Satius, what does that sound like? Satis, S-A-T-A-I-S. It sounds like Satan to me are committed to helping us achieve the awakening of our light body. So how can you awaken your light body if you're still in sin? And even those of us who have become Christians and we've had our sins washed away by the blood of Jesus. Okay, I don't, I don't see that I'm in light, okay? Um I haven't been able to walk through walls. Last time I checked, you know, doing that, I got a bump on my head <laughs> or a bruised shoulder or something. It just doesn't work yet, okay? I have not ascended to my light body yet. I'm not floating around, you know. I don't need a car anymore because I can float myself over the grocery store and float my groceries back home here. I haven't achieved that yet. Maybe I'm just kind of being dense. I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, you know, let's get real, folks, awakening of our light bodies, okay? We know through uh, some of the prophets of God um, that when when God pours out in these latter days his, his the rhema word, his holiness, the uh, his power upon his people, they will um, be elevated. They will be empowered into higher realities and um john this is where you uh that three days of dark nights of darkness and then after that time is that those people who are in christ jesus will emerge from um <clears throat> their abodes where they've been you know huddled in just like you made reference earlier about the um the <laughs> Uh, help me out here. <laughs> My mind is kind of frazzled. Um, Passover, okay, the Passover. Uh, three days, three nights in your houses during the Passover. Okay, so there's going to come a time here, three days, three nights of darkness. We are to shut the doors behind us and uh, go into seclusion. But after that time, um, God's Holy Spirit will be poured down upon us, and we will appear as light unto those people out there when we go out to minister to people after this, uh, that event. So they will be seeing the light that that, uh, that comes down upon us and shines through us, okay? They're going to see that light. They're going to see it. They're going to experience it. And for some people, they're going to run away from that light because they prefer to live in darkness, but others will be attracted to that light. And they'll, they'll want to be, you know, learn all about the true light of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> instead of this false light from the Syrians and Pleiadians and Arcturians and all these other groups. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, they they provide the awakening with a greater understanding of the forces behind the global conspiracy. They provide the awakening. Okay, so this planet is plagued by the reptilians, reptilian shapeshifters, the... Um, the grays, those kinds, you know, and with human-alien hybrids, you know, it's really dark, 
deep, dark foreboding, and we, we know a lot about that, you know, deep underground military bases sharing with aliens and vats of uh, humans cooking away for these aliens to slurp down with big straws, that kind of stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> the higher dimension beings like these Syrians probably most likely look down at these reptilians with contempt. And the Syrians look down at... You know, the grays, the reptilians with utter contempt at what they're doing to mankind, the human race. And the Syrians look forward to that time when they can help in the liberation of this planet from these dark groups. When these dark groups will be rid off this planet and mankind can flourish as it was meant to flourish. But hello, folks, the Syrians, that this group here that's talking through Patricia Corey are now, you know, ascended from the third dimension into the sixth dimension. So they're still within this nine nine total dimension reality. And remember Lucifer, Ezekiel 28, verse 12, 13, and 13, of the nine stones also correlate with this nine levels of heaven, or dimensions, okay, nine dimensions within this fallen one-third reality. Okay, so within this fallen one-third reality, he is the God of this fallen one-third reality within this sandbox confinement system. Okay? And so at the ninth level, that's the Luciferian level, where you become at one with Lucifer. So the Assyrians at the sixth dimension have not yet ascended to the ninth dimension but they're still part of this fallen one-third. They're still in their own sin. So if you want to listen to somebody who's still in their own sin, trying to dangle a carrot in front of you and to open you up to your starseed legacy when in fact you should have a godseed legacy, what they're trying to do is still to demote you instead of, you know, Jesus is the one who came and died on the cross. There's not one Syrian that's ever come here to die on the cross for your sins or my sins. But Jesus did. <laughs> okay? Jesus is the one who died on that cross for you and me. I don't think there's one Syrian in all existence that would come here and lay their lives down for the sin. You know, it's one thing to, you know, take a bullet for somebody, right? It's quite another, another thing to have the sins of all mankind heaped upon you as if you yourself committed every one of them, past, present, and future. And that's what Jesus did. Do you think a Syrian would do that for you, me? Do you think Lucifer would do that for you and me? So who you want to listen to? You want to listen to these Syrians? You want to listen to Lucifer? Or do you want to listen to what Jesus has to say and what Jesus can do for you? Okay. To me, that's logic 101. Go with Jesus. He has a higher dimension, a higher reality. He has the true legacy. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He's the author and finisher of our individual destinies that were predestined before the foundations of the cosmos. Who would you rather go with? Okay. All right, so from their sixth dimension level, they're looking down at our third dimensional level, and they're seeing the interactions with the greys and the reptilians with the human race, and they find it just totally despicable. So they themselves find this awful, and they themselves would like to liberate mankind, but they, the Syrians, are still in a fallen state. Even though they've ascended to the sixth dimensional level, they are still in a fallen state. And they cannot do what Jesus can do and what Jesus did do at the cross. Okay. Um, So they want to bring the light of truth to those who are still huddled in the darkness. Okay, so the Syrians at the sixth dimensional level have, have a higher light of truth than we have here on the third dimensional. Except for those of us who've come to Jesus Christ sins washed away, and we study the Word of God, and we walk in the Spirit, and we acquire the mind that Jesus has, okay? 
to be, become more like him? Would you rather be more like Jesus or would you rather be more like a Syrian? Okay. Okay, so the Syrians have a certain degree of, of, of light of truth, a sixth dimensional. But Jesus has, and so does Lucifer. Lucifer at the ninth dimensional, he has even greater light and truth than the Syrians do. But Jesus has an even greater light and truth. He embodies all light and truth. So who would you rather go with, a Syrian at the sixth dimensional level or Jesus at the very top? Okay, as they say in the world, don't mess around with people at the bottom. Go to the person at the top, okay? Don't mess around with these Syrians at the sixth dimensional bottom here. Within the fallen one-third of nine dimensions, go with the person at the top that's above all this stuff, and that would be Jesus. Okay, and there are most of mankind is huddled in the darkness. Okay, and these these Syrians want to assist those who intend to serve as healers and guides of the ascension during the great transformation of all life in our quadrant of the three dimensional galaxy. Now that sounds noble, doesn't it? Sounds great, noble, loving, kind. They're just really concerned about mankind. Okay, healers and guides. Okay, healers and guides within the fall within this reality we live in the dark side has a certain degree of being able to heal heal and be guides of the ascension okay um, <clears throat> but it's not the same as what Jesus can deliver okay when Jesus heals you you know you're healed when Jesus guides you unto his truth and light you know you're guided okay there's no question about it all right, the great transformation of all life in our quadrant. Okay, that great transformation, is that going to be something that's going to be a, a good, wonderful experience, or is it going to be another cosmic war on our doorstep and materialized on our very own planet once again? Okay, um, if I had anything to say about it, I'd say, no thanks, I'll pass up on this great transformation because I don't need it because I have Jesus. Okay? He's all the transformation I need. I don't need this carrot dangling in front of me from the Syrians. Okay, it continues. Are you torn in the struggle of darkness or light? Well, anybody who's even awake, even somebody in the world who's awake to what's going on in the world, they if they have any sense of humanity, any sense of compassion and empathy for others in, in their heart and their soul, would would recognize this struggle of darkness and light. Are you anxious about what is transpiring in the global theater? Well, again, if you are even partially awake, you, you probably are anxious about what's going on in the world today. Everything all around us is just heating up like crazy, and people are doing insane things all over the place. Um, <clears throat> and so, yeah, so, you know, back you know, 100 years ago, one person... Uh, the whole world, but today we live in a reality where, where one person can press the button and launch World War III and forever change reality. Just one person can do that. <laughs> okay. Um, or are you one of the are are you one of the awakening, clear in your resolve and intent? Okay, it's good to be clear in your resolve and intent, but who or what are you awakening to? Okay. The, the the people who are, um, let's say, like the um, rank-and-file Democrats that are uh, setting up, you know, for the campa- campaigns and Republicans and Libertarians, you know, they really believe in their cause. So they're already gearing up for this next presidential race as well as Congress, you know, uh, Senate, Republic, uh, the House, you know, all the various races as well as state races and county races. Uh, all these diff- various factions are gearing up, you know, they're starting to, spend the money, starting to uh, put people on the payroll, starting to get involved in, on all these races because they believe in their cause. But is it, a, is it a true cause or is it just another smoke and mirrors that ends up, you know, <laughs> bringing another world cataclysm on the stage? Okay, so <clears throat> clear and resolve and intent. So a lot of these people are clear in their resolve and intent, but the Bible tells us there's a... Um, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is destruction. Okay, so these people 
are clear in their resolve and intent to win the next presidential election, to win the ne- you know Congress and state levels and county levels and city levels. They're really clear in their resolve and intent. But there's a resolve and intent that leads to destruction. Okay, and then it continues and committed to personal and planetary healing. Well, there's a lot of people who are committed to personal and planetary healing. They're doing what they can to help, uh, you know, recycling and cleaning up the environment. And those are good, good causes, whether you're a Christian or not. We can all benefit from cleaning up our environment and holding polluters uh, accountable for their pollutions. Um, but again, all it takes is one for one, one person to push the button, and it's all over. And all your efforts to clean up the environment in in one button, the environment is a worldwide basis is contaminated. <clears throat> Just from that one example, let alone chemtrails and pollutions and Fukushima, and the dust and debris cloud that Planet X is going to. Uh, pass over on us, you know, that we're going to get in all this space dust and space viruses and space diseases inflicted upon the earth, and we're not going to know what's hitting us or where it's coming from until, you know, billions of people are dead, that kind of thing. Um, and it continues, now is the time, Starseed, to remember who you are. Now is the time to remember. Okay, Starseed, again, do you want to be a Starseed or do you want to be a God seed? Remember who you are? Well, who are you? Okay. Who are you really? Yeah, we all have that question. Who am I? Why am I here? Just occupying? Am I just here to be a cog in the wheel, just another cog in the matrix, you know, an endless, meaningless life? Or is there something beyond the matrix, beyond this great American dream, okay, that's turned into a nightmare? Is there something more here? <clears throat> of course there is. If you, if you, but if you only want us to uh, ascend to a star seed, you're going to be limiting yourself. So, from a third dimensional reality to ascend to a six dimensional understanding, that would again seem like if you could acquire 16% DNA activation, you would think, "Wow, I'm in with Flynn. I'm a super soldier. I'm a super Superman or Superwoman type of person with all these greater capabilities." But you're still not at 100%. And you can't get to 100% because of that sin problem. It goes back to the Garden of Eden. So if you just want to be a star seed, be my guest. But that's not where I'm going. I'm not going to limit myself to being a star seed. I'm a God seed. Can I remember who I was within within uh, traditional understanding? You know, we start with Adam and Eve and move forward through. Other understandings is the possibility that mankind had pre-existence, got caught up in this angel wars, and now we're coming through once again uh, to make, see whether we're going to make the same kind of decisions, same kind of screw-ups, or are we going to get on board with Jesus here? And, <clears throat> okay, that's kind of in a nutshell. It's much more detailed and stuff like that. But if, we, if mankind did have pre-existence, and then, you know, we uh, made an agreement, okay, we'll, we'll cycle through here again and uh, be in, incarnated into these flesh bodies. And part of the deal is that we have our memories erased so we can't remember who we were. So you can uh, bang your head against the wall all you want trying to remember. But, uh, you know, to me, I got enough on my plate to concern myself than trying to remember what I might have might have done millions of years ago or billions of years ago. Okay, I got enough on my plate right now to just to get through today, get through tomorrow, get through the, the month, a year, you know, and to be a Christian that Jesus can be proud of. Okay? And the kind of Christian that can, you know, do a, a fairly decent job of, putting my best foot forward and, you know, being a good Christian, doing good works, uh, that kind of thing, handing out compliments, trying to lift others up instead of kicking them down when they're down, you know, trying to do my part, my role to clean up the environment where I can, you know. I can't help somebody from pushing that nuclear button, but I can at least pick up some garbage and 
properly recycle it, do my part. Okay. Um, to remember who I am, I'd have to go before my father and ask him for that special permission to bring those memories back to me. Okay. Right now, I don't have an overriding desire to do that. Um, knowing what lies ahead of us and not in the too distant future, quite possibly in the 216, 217 time frame, we're looking at some very dark stuff, as well as some potentially awesome God stuff coming up on the horizon. And so rather than trying to look back at the past, at what, what I might have done, what I might have said, I'd rather look forward and be prepared to be that my faith will remain anchored in Jesus Christ no matter what happens to me, no matter what happens around me. That my faith will be remain anchored in Jesus Christ no matter what. That's number one. Number two is that I can be the best witness that I possibly can be to others around me and bring as many people on board as I can to be a good steward with what God has has gifted me at this point in time. Okay, and and when these things, if if that if it holds true in the 2016-17 time frame, if those events hold true to come to pass during that time, I need to be ready in my heart, my soul, my mind, my spirit. I need to be prayed up. I need to be worded up in God's word. I need to be ready for battle. There's going to be many, many victories. Praise Jesus moment victories, but there's also going to be lots of carnage and devastation around us where we have to pick up the pieces of not only our own lives but other people's lives. We're going to have to be the shoulder they cry on. We have to be the heart that touches their hearts and say, I understand your pain. Okay? You're going to have to be to walk with Jesus during those times and not take, you know, remember the story about Peter where he, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he walked on water. But the moment he he realized, you know, he was like, oh, I'm walking on water. And he, he looked away from Jesus and looked down upon his circumstances, and then he began to sink into the water. That's To me, that's a perfect co- uh, correlation to the times that are coming up ahead, as well as now today, you know. But especially those times, because they're going to be very, very if, trying like we've never seen before, as if, Things can't get any worse. They get worse. But as they get worse, the victory in Jesus gets even better. Okay? So we have to look at the silver lining in those clouds. We have to remember Peter's example to keep our eyes on Jesus to obtain the victory, to walk on that water, to walk above the carnage and devastation that's around us so we can achieve the victory in Jesus Christ in those lives around us, if that makes sense. And I'm talking to myself as well. I'm no great, um, you know, riding uh, some white knight riding on a white horse, you know, ready to do battle (laughs) against the forces of darkness. Okay, I'm just as culpable as anybody else, and I have to take my own advice here, okay, to be prayed up and worded up and armored up, uh, Ephesians 6, you know, that kind of thing. So to do that, though, is, is to be is to be humbled before the Lord because you just got to know you can't do it in your own strength. Okay, it's just going to be so overwhelming what's coming ahead for for all of mankind on the earth. It's going to be so overwhelming that it's just going to crush a lot of people. And for those of us who are who are anchored in Jesus, it's going to be crushing. It won't crush us to death, but it will be crushing to our spirits and our minds, our souls, and we'll have to find it within us to rise above and to refocus our sight on Jesus to lead us through the minefields that lie ahead, not only in the carnage all around us, but the minefields that lie ahead as we move forward in Jesus. Okay, so again, would you rather be a star seed under these circumstances or would you rather be a God seed under these coming circumstances? I think the answer should be obvious. Okay, so I know that God has has gifted certain people to remember who they were and the conditions of their uh, incarnation into this life. And that's great. That's wonderful. That's a, a confirmation that, that, you know, 
Now I would say, okay, it sounds like it's highly probable, highly likely that mankind did have preexistence, okay? Um, <clears throat> but I'm not going to lose any sleep over what my – if God wants to reveal that to me, I will accept it. If he doesn't, if if he prefers not to, see, sometimes, you know, in, in, uh, in our time here, you know, people that have gone through horrible situations in their life, they go into like a uh, – you know, your body, if you get in a car accident or something like that, can go into a physical shock. But there's also an emotional shock. So maybe somebody has just been emotionally devastated, maybe raped. And, yes, men can also be raped by women. So it can be both both directions there. Um, it can even be man-on-man man rape or woman-on-woman woman rape. It's not just a man-on-woman rape thing. Anybody can be raped by anybody, okay? And then you get these serpent creatures that are raping earth women and earth guys, you know, and stuff and doing their thing with them, you know, it's just awful. Well, okay, so there's going to be a physical shock, but even more encompassing is that psychological shock that you go into and then you end up living in denial. You just your your mind just seals that thing off completely because you can't deal with it. And <clears throat> and so that part of your life um, everything, everything that you were up to that point, you can't go back to that. You can't go back to who you were before that point, because to go to, the, to that point, you have to go through the point where you became violated, and it's just too painful. Okay, so you, you, that part of your life is sealed off. You don't want to go there. You don't want to talk about it. You don't want to think about it. Okay, <clears throat> that's totally understandable. All right. <clears throat> So imagine, if you will, if mankind had preexistence and, you know, I have no idea if all of us or just some of us were involved in some aspect of this angel wars on the bad side or on the good side or uh, on sitting on the fence, I have no idea. But picture, if you will, if some of us were on the bad side, got involved in the bad side, even if it was out of ignorance, but the, the memory you know, it would put us in such a state of shock and denial that if God were to reveal those memories to us, it would just completely devastate us. And we would just lose all focus on our hope, our anchor in Jesus Christ, and we would fall. Again, if we had preexistence, we just might fall once again, and once for all we would fall and be forever lost. And God in his mercy has Seal those memories shut so that we can't open the door no matter what we do because he doesn't want us to remember because the past is too devastating. It would swallow us up in a black hole forever. So in his mercy, he has sealed those memories shut. Okay? Now, if that rings true to anybody listening to this, praise Jesus, you know, that God in his mercy has sealed your memories shut. And it's not important for you to remember. It's important to you to keep your focus on Jesus, to keep yourself anchored in Jesus no matter what. To remember that example of Peter, as long as he kept his eyes on Jesus, he could walk on water. But the moment Brother he Walt. started to focus on his circumstances around him, he began to sink. And that's gonna, that reality is going to become even more important next year, the year after, if these, things, these uh, prophecies play out in that time period. We have to keep our focus, we have to keep our anchor in Jesus Christ and not worry about our past, even in our own lifetime, right here, right now, upon our past. We have to get real, we have to humble ourselves. Go right ahead, Ken. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's relevant right here. Psalm you, you 88, 12. Psalm 88, 12, brother. It okay. says it all, what you're saying. Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? Psalm 88, verse 12. So amen to what you're saying. He's protected us from a total meltdown. Yeah. Emotionally, physically, spiritually, by placing us in a land of forgetfulness. And, and, <laughs> and the, the one where Psalm 88, 12 says, Shall thy wonders be known in the dark, and thy righteousness in the land of forgetfulness? So he did it for whatever reason, brother. But you know your 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 thesis there is very plausible, so that we don't have an absolute total breakdown, emotionally, right. physically, and spiritually, because the abomination, the the past may have been so ugly that he yeah. just said, "I'm going to put you into a land of forgetfulness." 
and I'm going to yep. protect you. So yep. for whatever reason, brother, Psalm 88, 12. Yeah, see, that that's how much he loves us, that he would, for some, for some of us, maybe most of us, he would purposely seal our memories shut to protect us from ourselves, to protect us from our own past, to s- protect us from our own ugly sins from long ago, and to offer us this hope through his son, Jesus Christ. So, it, so you know, he's, uh, he's offered us forgiveness and forgetfulness through his son, Jesus Christ, that we don't have to look back. We don't have to engulf again in that ugliness of whatever it is we might have done or might not have done, you know. In my own experience, the reason I can relate to this is that I had my own experience back in, uh, what was it, 78, um, 8 through 80, 79, and somewhat in the 80, but I is specifically in early 79, I went through an experience that just totally ripped through me. It's just like somebody took a knife and just stuck it in my gut and just turned it and turned it and turned it and turned it. Okay, just brought me right down to the nub. I mean, in today's environment, I might have committed suicide, but I prayed Jesus, praised Jesus that I did not. But I went into... Um, I suppose again today would be classified as clinical depression, but I, you know, I went into a depressed state. I could just lay only lay around all day long and stare off into space and sob and cry and all that kind of stuff and think really dark thoughts. And I had a Chinese friend. Now this Chinese friend was fairly fresh from Hong Kong, and uh, he and I, uh, I kind of felt like a outcast, you know. I was never one of the in crowd, and and him coming over from Hong Kong, he felt not, uh, you know, tied into American society. So we kind of hit it off right right away when we met first met, you know, because we kind of both understood what it's like to be an outcast, not part of the in crowd, you know, that kind of thing. So the Chinese have, you know, thousands of years of history behind them, and that includes culture, military, politics, economics, and psychology so from that type of cultural background he understood what i was going through and he understood just some practical things to help keep me going so he would invite you know, said come on lauren let's go get some uh the, the chinese restaurant and have some uh you know rice and stuff you know and just talk about things or he'd invite me over to his apartment and he'd maybe cook something up you know chinese meal or something and let me listen to music or watch TV or something, just to be together with somebody doing something that does not remind you of, of the ho- horrible thing you went through, okay? But during that two weeks' time, at the end of that two weeks, I was so depressed that I, I saw myself going deep into um, like a tunnel, deep into myself through a tunnel, deep, 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 and I came to the end of this tunnel, there was a door. And I tried as hard as I could to open that door every which way, and, you know, and I just could not get it to open. Okay, so there was only one way I could go. Is I could, well, two choices. I either could stay there or I could come, go back up the tunnel. So I chose to go back up the tunnel. So I know that psychologically meaning that means that I came to the point of a decision, am I going to stay depressed and stay in that position, or am I going to come back up and face reality as painful as it was, face reality and work through this stuff, okay? So I made the choice to come back up the tunnel and to face my reality, and as painful as it was to work through it, okay? So it took a a while for me to work through that. But even so, it forever shaped who I became, it was a defining moment in my life that forever changed me. I could never go back to being innocent in my outlook in the world. I well understood through that experience the of life that's all around us. I began to understand the matrix. Okay, uh, you know, even though I didn't, un- I didn't know it by that name, by the matrix, I began to understand it. Even before I understood the matrix, okay, I under, began to understand it. Uh, back then, I called it the system. I got really initiated into the system. All right, so 
that doorway, what if I would have been successful in opening that door? What lies beyond that door within me was sheer terror. And God in his, you know, sheer terror, sheer insanity. Had I succeeded in opening that door, I have no doubt I would have entered into the realm of complete insanity. But God in his mercy kept that door shut. Now, I still had a choice to make. I could stay in that down there with that door shut or I could come back up. And I made the choice to come back up. Okay, so God protected me. He kept that door shut so I could not go through and face what lies in the trueness of my sin nature. Every one of us has the full trueness of our sin natures. And God in his mercy, for the most part, keeps us away from that, keeps us from going in that direction. Okay, now... That was my experience in in this flesh body, in this carnal existence. What about my former existence, millions, maybe billions of years ago, and and anybody else's? Okay, so so what I'm getting, you know, God in His mercy for for some of us, maybe a lot of us, has sealed those memories shut and kept that door shut, no matter how hard we try to open it, in His mercy for us. Because if if that truth were to be revealed to us, we'd be totally crushed, and maybe totally let go of our salvation it'd just be too much for us to handle so in his mercy he keeps that sealed from us so all we can do is to move forward i I mean yeah we could stay there stay you know treading water or stay stuck in the past at that point but if we if we choose to you know get healed and work through our situation, work through our pain, work through, come to some answers to, to get improvement, healing and stuff and move forward in life, and that's what we got to do. And we have that through Jesus Christ. Now, for me, that didn't happen. It's not like Jesus waving a magic wand, now I'm all healed and, and presto change, I'm all cleaned up and ready to take on the world again. No. <laughs> I had to work a number of years to work through that. And like I said, that ex- one experience forever changed me. I now saw the duality of the world. I now saw the matrix. I saw the system with clearness. <laughs> okay. That had that experience, had I not had that experience, I would have fo- possibly forever viewed the world through the eyes of innocence to my own peril because I would have not come to the point of being wise as serpents. Okay, I would have not been able to detect the deception that's in the world. But that one experience opened my eyes, and yes, it hurt like hell <laughs> for some time. But Jesus is faithful to us, and he helped me work through it, and he'll help you work through it, and he'll help the many people a year from now, two years from now, he'll help them work, work through it. Just like my friend from Hong Kong was there to help me, we are going to be there to help others one year from now, two years from now, that are suffering from what's going to come upon the earth. Okay? So for me, I don't care what's in my past millions of years ago. God has offered his package of salvation or redemption to his son, that we can have our sins, even if it's the millions of years ago, sins we committed back then, to have them all washed away by his blood, restored, renewed, in him, through him, and to be empowered to stay with him. But, of course, that requires some effort on our part. Again, it's not a magic wand theory that presto changeo. You know, we have our own wills, our own egos, that we have to, carnal natures, flesh natures that we have to, some of us have to put down every day to get through the day in any semblance of Christianity, right? Because (laughs) it's really easy to get in the carnal realm and want to punch somebody's lights out. I've been there many times, okay, but I praise Jesus that his spirit reigns supreme in me and he can calm me down, you know, Calm me down, step back, 
you know, step back from that situation, calm down, take some time to think it through, pray it through. And he's never failed me that after I, I'm obedient and I do those things, he helps me understand the situation much more fully and dynamically than if I would have reacted through carnal means. Because, you know, 90 zillion times out of a, a um, you know, multi-zillion times, if you react out of carnal means, you're going to get yourself in trouble. So if you really do punch somebody's lights out or you really do do something horrible, you end up in jail. And if you're a Christian, you end up killing somebody, you're going to have that soul scar on your soul for the rest of your life. You know, it's going to be really difficult to have that washed away until you get into heaven to the crystal river of life and there have it washed away. <clears throat> okay. So there's some things in this life, yes, we could, you know, do some things, but it's really better not to. To let Jesus resolve these issues. All right. <clears throat> okay. Um, continuing. Aided by extraterrestrial intelligence of higher dimensions. Okay. Who do you want to be aided by? Do you want to be aided by Syrians, you know, extraterrestrial intelligence of the higher dimensions, the Syrians, the speakers of the Syrian High Council, or do you want to be aided by the top extraterrestrial intelligence of the highest dimension, and that would be Jesus, okay? But nowhere in the Syrian revelation business do they even mention Jesus, okay? So you see, by not not even mentioning him as a an ascended master, they're they're demoting him right there. Okay, so again, would you rather be aided by a Syrian or would you rather be aided by Jesus? But again, to the lost, you know, they they look at Jesus and oh, you know, <clears throat> that Christianity business, you know, throw the baby out of the bathwater. But they'll be willing to get on the bandwagon with these Syrians when they show up, you know, get on the bandwagon and get all this extraterrestrial intelligence of the higher dimensions. And get on those Merkabah light ships straight to hell, you know. <clears throat> but we who understand this stuff can rescue some of these people from this type of deception and bring them on board with Jesus. Okay. We, star seed of other worlds. Again, would you rather be a star seed or would you rather be a God seed? Explore our greatest challenges and opportunities to bring healing, to bring the awakening tools to those light workers who are committed to helping prepare the way for our ascension through the clearing station of the fourth dimension and on to our higher dimensions. Okay, the fourth dimension is just a clearing station. <laughs> okay, that's good to know, huh? <clears throat> I don't know, you know, in my experience, if that has any application, I'm not going to worry about the fourth dimension again because if I remain faithful to Jesus, okay, anchored with Jesus, then my destiny is much higher than the fourth dimension. My destiny is much higher than the sixth dimension. My destiny is much higher than the ninth dimension. My destiny is above those dimensions. Okay. Again, how high do you want to go? Okay, if somebody, you know, these transhumanists, I know we're getting close to the top of the hour here. The transhumanists today are... are dangling that carrot in front of mankind saying, hey, you know, if you take this pill, you take this biochip, we're, we're going to be able to reprogram your DNA and we're going to tap into that junk DNA and activate it and you're going to have superhuman type of capabilities and you're going to be able to plug into the World Wide Web, you know, by taking this chip in your body and all this business, you know. And people that do that will think, wow, they're, they're going to feel like gods. Well, yeah, you know, if you were to able to act, react, you know, activate yourself from eight percent to sixteen percent you would feel like a god but once you understand the true history history of mankind starting from adam and eve at one hundred percent then after the flood you know give or take fifty percent after tower of babel another loss of fifty percent plus or minus you'll realize that oh sixteen percent i haven't even gotten to the point of the tower of babel yet of what they had <laughs> Because it hasn't been taught to us, folks. It hasn't even been taught in the churches. That mankind started at the top. He's degraded all the way down to where we're at. So anybody that can show up or make a promise, here, take this pill, take this chip, or any of these Syrians that show up, they'll appear like gods to us. It'll appear, feel like a godlike experience, okay? But it's all deception. And, he, he, and even so, 
it still does not address the sin issue. Okay, so even after Adam and Eve sinned, they still retained one, you know, one hundred percent of their flesh DNA and nearly one hundred percent of their soul DNA activation. But at the end, see that the death, the physical death, the soul death did not happen right away. The spiritual death happened right away when they sinned. But they continued to live on in their carnal flesh natures and their soul natures almost to 1,000 years. Then finally, death came a knocking. Okay, so, but if you're if you were living that long. You would think, well, yeah, what God told us was a big fat lie, and the serpent over there told us the truth that we surely would not die because, hey, we're still alive here. Yeah, so we we lost our spiritual connection, but we're still alive, right? (laughs) Because they didn't have the correct interpretation of what God was telling them, nor the correct interpretation of what the serpent was telling them about dying, what dying would truly mean. It's like, okay... You can warn somebody about, you know, that burner on the stove is red hot. If you put your hand on there, you're going to burn your hand bad. Okay, well, you know what? I don't believe you. So I'm going to plant my hand right on that burner because I'm going to be one of those lucky few people that doesn't burn their hand. But guess what, folks? My hand gets all burned. I have to go to the hospital and even have my hand chopped off, okay? (laughs) Or you might think, oh, warning about walking in front of a Mack truck, okay? Well, I'm going to be one of those fortunate few that can walk in front of an oncoming Mack truck or a, you know, 80 mile an hour speeding locomotive train full of train cars, and I'll live to tell about it. But guess what, folks? (laughs) You won't live to tell about it. Odds are, okay? Um, So there's just some things, you know, logic 101, common sense that uh, you just don't do. And and remember the second temptation that the that Lucifer tempted Jesus was was go up to this high, high place and launch yourself off to the ground below, and the angels will capture you before you your feet even touch the ground. The angels will be there to capture you. Okay, well that's the same kind of thing. Just walk in front of an oncoming Mack truck or tempt fate with driving your car across the train tracks just seconds before the train might smash into you. You know, just go for the thrill of it all. You know, or plant your hand right on that hot burner. You know. Yeah, you can do those things, but you probably won't live to tell about it, you know. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> so physical death and soul death did not come right away to Adam and Eve, nor their descendants. But it eventually came. But spiritual death did ha- happen right away. Okay. <clears throat> um Our eyes, our hearts, our minds are open, and we are empowered by the wisdom and light of the Syrian High Council, who, like the Palladian missionaries and light beings of higher dimensions, have come to help us understand the conspiracy that has helped, held us in powerlessness to reveal the secrets and lies that have denied us our true heritage as children of the stars and to achieve our true destiny as star seed of the cosmos of soul and emissaries of the new earth. Okay. Would you rather be empowered by the wisdom and light of the Syrians or would you rather be empowered by the wisdom and light of Jesus Christ? Okay, that should be an obvious answer. But again, those uh, in the world would probably go, most of the people in the world would go with the wisdom uh, wisdom and light of the Syrians. Not understanding what I've just been talking about, about the DNA about superhumans and transhuman technologies and everything, not realizing that mankind has been down this path before. Mankind, once upon a time, had more activation, and Adam and Eve had full activation of DNA. Not realizing how far mankind has fallen over these thousands of years. And so they then buy into this lies, this deception of the Syrians here thinking that they're giving us wisdom and light. Well, of course, there's a certain degree of wisdom and light from the Syrians, but it's not the same level as what Jesus can deliver. Again, do you want to limit yourself to the sixth dimension, or do you want to go to the top with Jesus? Okay. 
Okay, the conspiracy that has held us in powerlessness. Indeed, there is a conspiracy to reveal the secrets and lies that have denied us our true heritage. That's true. The secrets and lies that divide that have denied mankind our true heritage as children of the stars. Okay, well, do you want to be a child of the stars or do you want to be a child of of the Most High God? Okay, I'd rather be a child of the Most High God and not a child of the stars. Okay, Um, to achieve our true destiny as starseed to the cosmos, well, do you want to be, again, a true destiny as a starseed or true destiny as a Godseed in Christ Jesus? The answer should be obvious. Okay. Now, <clears throat> we have to. People are going to be sucked in. Okay, we're getting up to six fifty-eight. So. Oh yeah, we're 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 okay. pretty much there, brother. God bless yeah. you. So, um, uh, on I hope this, all this has that, made sense there. <laughs> yeah, the the deception is so close to reality. The yeah, yeah. slight twist of the words star seed is opposed. You know, isn't it fascinating? You look at Daniel 12, for example. Yeah. <clears throat> and in Daniel 12, you see, those who are wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Praise God. Uh, the, the deception is so close. And just like you said earlier, it's not a matter of choosing to ascend uh, to to a higher level or another dimension. Really, at the end of the day, it's simply going to hell and burning forever. Yep. That's yep. really it. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes unto the Father but by me, which means Amen. any other way. You end up in a lake of fire. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Make the right choice. Get with Jesus. Praise God. We're running out of time. Hallelujah. And thank you so much, Brother Lauren, for joining us tonight. Peterson Chronicles, Angel Wars, the Lucifer and Rebellion show number 60. And we'll see you all next Saturday night. God willing. God bless you all. God bless you Thanks, all. Brother all Lauren. Right. Bye-bye, Kenneth. Thank you. Hopefully you're not still up in your roof there, buddy. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>